When I was 23 years old and still lived in Atlanta, I was driving home from the movies one night. I had a Cadillac Cimarron and accidentally turned on the fog lights instead of the headlights. The switches were right beside each other, so I drove about 50 feet, then I realized it and I turned on the headlights. Still, a cop pulled me over. Sirens, flashing lights, the whole deal. Have you been drinking, sir? Now let's take a few steps back before I finish this story. When I was five, my father made the mistake of leaving me with my uncle while he ran to the store. In that short span of time, my uncle thought it would be funny to give me a can of beer. I hated it. It was the last time that I finished an alcoholic drink. I'm telling you this for context. I still really hate the taste of alcohol, so I just never got into drinking. Anyway, this cop. He asked if I'd been drinking, and I answered honestly. Oh, no, I don't drink. I just hit the wrong switch, the one for the fog. Before I could finish, the cop was yelling at me. Why? Apparently because I said I don't drink. All right, let's step back again. Now I want to switch gears here and ask you to use your imagination about something. Let's imagine that your brother or sister is a painter. What if they created a portrait envisioning what your family will look like in 10 years? That might be pretty dope. But what if, when the painting was completed, you saw that they left you out of it? All the family was included, but not you. How would that make you feel? Rejected? Forgotten? Hate it? Now, consider what it's like to be black and notice that every futuristic movie, novel, or comic book that you encounter has almost no black people in it. All this art depicts in the future, but black people are nowhere to be found. Is that the future that people are envisioning? One with no black people? How would that make you feel? So the first big thought I want to explore is this. Why is it so important for people to be included in art? This is the central seed of Afrofuturism. Afrofuturism. So most of you will be aware of the recent death of Congressman John Lewis. As a young man, he was part of the civil rights movement. And he worked hard to make meaningful changes in society until his death at age 80. Back in 2015, he went to San Diego Comic-Con and he cosplayed as himself. So he dressed up as the younger version of himself from when he marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This was in part his way of promoting a three book graphic novel series about his life called March. Congressman John Lewis felt that it was vital to have his story told, but why? The New York Times asked that same question. Apparently, when John Lewis was 17 years old, he read a comic book about Martin Luther King called Martin Luther King of the Montgomery Story. This was before he ever met King, and he was moved by this comic book. In John Lewis' own words, I read it and I reread it, and this book inspired me. Of seeing Martin Luther King in the comic book, Lewis said, he became my hero, my inspiration, my leader. He inspired me to say no to segregation and racial discrimination. So inspired by the comic book, among other things, John Lewis joined civil rights organizations and went on to have a life dedicated to changing the world. So again, I want to ask you to use your imagination. What if John Lewis never read that comic book? Or what if the comic book was never created? Or worse, what if the comic book had been censored until it had nothing in it about civil rights protest? If any of these things had happened, it's possible that one of the key figures in the American civil rights movement may never have done any of the wonderful things that we know him for. I want to emphasize this. Some people got together, used their art to write and draw a comic book. 
that comic book inspired a man who went on to have a major impact on the world. The world was changed because someone was inspired by art. That's the power that art can have. So what does it do to you when art shows you a vision of the future without you in it? How does that affect you? Here's another way to look at it. How would it feel if you dated somebody, fell in love with them, but when that person talked about the future, they never mentioned you? So when black, Latino, Asian, or LGBTQ people watch these movies, read these books, listen to these songs, all describing the future, and they don't see themselves there, what do you think that tells us? One of my heroes, this brilliant black artist named Melvin Van Peebles, gave an interview in France in the 1960s. He said that even though he was an American citizen and had published half a dozen novels in France, he'd never tried to publish any in America because the only thing that white people in America wanted him to write about was black suffering. Black suffering. Can you imagine only existing in art on the basis of your suffering? If art inspires people to great things, what's the effect when you're absent from any art except for your suffering? And how does this absence affect white people? This brings me back to that cop. Why was he yelling at me? Because that dude could not see me. It didn't matter that I've never been drunk in my entire life. All he saw was, quote unquote, unnamed, African-American suspect who committed the heinous crime of driving 50 feet with my headlights off. I wasn't a human to him. I wasn't a person. But let me ask you, what if on the night before he stopped me, that cop had read or watched something that connected him to the humanity of black people? How might our interaction have been different? So how do we experience the humanity of people who never appear in your visions of the future? If you've been raised with images of a future that has nothing but white people in it, then what has that done to you? And listen, sometimes art can seem silly, especially for me, writing comic books and graphic novels while secret police are snatching people off the streets of Portland. It can seem really silly, even selfish, to be creating art right now. Like, should I even be doing this right now? Or should I just concentrate on marching out in these streets, giving my time to social justice nonprofits, pushing for new legislation? Some of you might have heard this story, but do you remember the original Star Trek series from the 1960s? There was one black cast member in the show, Nichols. Before the show, she had a career doing musical theater and Broadway shows. I want you to think about this. She'd be doing these Broadway shows where she got to play these complex, fully realized characters. Characters with different viewpoints and varied backgrounds. She got to sing, she got to dance, she got to really enjoy her craft. Then she left all that to be on a television show where every episode, her lines were pretty much, I'm hailing them now, Captain. After a couple years of that, she was bored and unfulfilled. Wouldn't you be? So she went and told the creator of the show, Gene Roddenberry, that she wasn't returning for the next season. She wanted to go back to theater. He tried to convince her otherwise, to no avail. A few weeks later, she was at a banquet, and there she met Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. She was surprised because one of his people came over and said that he wanted to meet her. When they talked, he told her that he loved her on Star Trek. She thanked him and told him that she was planning on leaving the show. So what did Dr. Martin Luther King, this legendary leader of the civil rights movement, say to that? He basically said, no, you can't do that. We need you. Michelle Nichols was confused. 
Martin Luther King told her that seeing her play this vision of a black woman in the future was inspiring to him, his children, and everyone who watched her on TV every week. Moved by his words, Michelle Nichols decided to stay on the show. Years later, the astronaut, Mae Jemison, said she was inspired to become an astronaut by seeing Michelle Nichols every week on Star Trek. Michelle Nichols was eventually approached by NASA to help recruit people into the astronaut program. So this art, this vision of a black woman in the future actually had real world consequences, Afrofuturism. And look, I don't know if anyone's thinking that the omission of black people in the future was an accident. It wasn't. Black people were cut out of visions of the future on purpose. I'll just give you two examples from comic books. In the 1940s, there was this comic book publisher called EC Comics. EC was especially known for their horror comics, most notably Tales from the Crypt. In the 1950s, there was this strong push by American politicians to censor comic books. One of the results of this was the formation of the Comics Code Authority. The Comics Code Authority essentially became the arbiter of decency in comic books. In 1956, EC Comics reprinted a story from before the Comics Code existed. This story was about a human astronaut who visits a planet inhabited by robots. The astronaut's job was to determine if the planet should be allowed into the Galactic Republic, which was kind of like a space version of the United Nations. Anyway, on this planet, the robots were identical, except that some were blue and some were orange. But the blue robots were treated as lower-class citizens. They didn't have as many rights as the orange robots. At the end of the story, the astronaut, who'd had his helmet on for the entire story, takes it off and is revealed to be a black man. Afrofuturism. So what was the reaction from the Comics Code Authority to this story? They insisted that the black astronaut had to be removed. The head of the Comics Code is quoted as saying, it can't be a black man. EC Comics rebutted, but that's the whole point of the story. But it was to no avail. EC Comics argued round and round with the Comics Code and eventually they rebelled and printed the story uncensored. But the fallout almost ran EC Comics out of business. That's what happened when you tried to include a black person in the future. Afrofuturism. Here's another example. In the late 50s, DC Comics published The Legion of Superheroes, a comic book about teenage superheroes living in the future, the 30th century to be exact. In the 1960s, a writer named Jim Shooter tried to introduce black characters into The Legion of Superheroes, but his editors wouldn't allow it. In the 1970s, artist Mike Grell was also prevented from introducing black characters into the series by his editors. After about 20 years of that comic book being published, people started writing in and asking why there were no black people in the future. Finally, in 1976, the editors came up with an idea to address this. They gave Mike Grell and writer Carrie Bates a black character that they wanted them to design named Tyrock. Now I want you to pay attention to this. The editor's explanation for why there were no black people in the future? Apparently, all of the black people in the future decided they were going to move to an island where no one could find them. <laughs> the artist Mike Grell was appalled at this idea. He called this story possibly the most racist concept I've ever heard in my life. He also calls it a segregationist dream. Mike Grell rebelled by giving the character Tyrock the most ridiculous costume he could think of. He said he based it on Elvis Presley's Las Vegas costume. I want to point out that the Legion of Superheroes comic book had members who were shape-shifting aliens with green and yellow skin, but somehow having black people in the book was a step too far. It was too disturbing for them to imagine a future that showed black people. Think about what that really means. So why is it so important that we all see ourselves in visions of the future? 
Art takes the intangible and makes it into something that we can wrestle with. You know, before the word microaggressions existed, I had no way to identify what was happening. But now that the word is here, I can point it out. I can even bond with other people who've experienced it. That's what art does. It takes the shadowy ride of oppression and racism, and it shines a light on it, reveals its shapes, allows us to build communities around destroying oppression. Martin Luther King drew inspiration from Star Trek. So I encourage every one of you who's listening now, create and support art that shows an inclusive vision of the future. It'll benefit us all. Thank you.